Hey guys, right here I have a 2014 Porsche Macan 2 liter turbo. And today I'm going to make a startup and full vehicle tour video of it, show you the features inside and out. So, here is the key fob, let's go ahead and start it up first. The shape of the key fob echoes the silhouette of the Panamera hatchback. The key fob itself can be painted to match the vehicle's exterior colour. Alright, so let's start it up. with the door closed. For Malaysia, the Macan comes with Porsche's Power Steering Plus system as standard. This system is basically a speed-sensitive electric rack and pinion power steering system. Standard on the 2-litre turbo models is a leather-wrapped steering wheel with thick sport grips at the 10 and 2 o'clock positions. The only transmission available for the whole Macan lineup as of now is Porsche's 7-speed PDK transmission. PDK stands for Porsche Double Coupling and it is what Porsche calls their dual-clutch automated manual transmission. PDK basically has two sets of clutches, one controlling gears 1, 3, 5 and 7, and the other one controlling gears 2, 4 and 6. PDK eliminates the use of both a clutch pedal as found in a conventional manual transmission and a torque converter as found in a conventional automatic transmission, all while aiming to give drivers smoother shifts, less lag between shift times, and improved fuel economy. This transmission has Tiptronic manual shifting, either via the plus and minus down by the gear lever, or via the pedal shifters on the back of the top two steering wheel spokes. The left pedal downshifts, while the right pedal upshifts. I did not show it in the video, but shifting the transmission into reverse will activate the parking sensors and a reverse camera that shows up on the infotainment display. The base of the gear lever is covered in leather, while the gear lever itself is covered in a combination of leather and aluminium with the PDK badging down below. Safety in the Macan consists of 6 airbags, anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, traction control, electronic stability control, immobilizer, and isofix child seat anchor points for the rear seats. This Macan 2-litre turbo comes with 21-inch 911 turbo design rims wrapped in Continental Conti Sport Contact 5P and 0 tyres. The front tyres measure 26540R21, while the rear ones measure 29535R21. Ventilated disc brakes are found at all four corners, while the front suspension uses an aluminium 5-arm wishbone setup and the rear suspension a self-tracking trapezoidal link setup. Porsche Active Suspension Management PASM, is standard issue for the Macan 2-litre turbo in Malaysia. PASM basically adjusts the Macan's damping force according to the current situation while driving. There are three modes to choose from, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. The Macan name is derived from the Indonesian word for leopard. This newest Porsche model was launched in Malaysia about a month ago, and as with all other Porsche models in Malaysia, the whole lineup is available. This means that there are four variants in the Macan lineup for Malaysia, the base Macan 2-litre turbo, the mid-range Macan S and Macan S diesel, and the top-of-the-line Macan Turbo. The Macan 2-litre turbo is considered the base Macan. This engine is available in select markets and one of them is Malaysia. Using a reworked version of VW Group's 2-litre turbocharged N94 found in various products, the Macan 2-litre turbo is the first Porsche to use a 4-cylinder engine since the Porsche 968 of the early 90s. 
Displacing 1,984 cubic centimeters, this engine features dual ovate cams, 16 valves, direct injection, and variable valve timing to produce 237 horsepower from 5,000 to 6,800 rpm and 350 newton meters of torque from 1,500 to 4,500 rpm. The 0 to 100 sprint takes 6.9 seconds onto a top speed of 223 km per hour. Malaysian spec Macans get the optional 75 litre fuel tank as standard, and the combined fuel consumption for the Macan 2 litre turbo is rated at 7.2 litres per 100 km with a carbon dioxide emissions of 168 grams per kilometre. The Macan gets an active all wheel drive system. When Porsche first set out to make the Cayenne SUV back in 2002, many were skeptical as the Cayenne lineup drifted away from what makes a true Porsche, small and fun to drive two-door sports cars. Instead, the Cayenne was a big five-door SUV. A lot of people soon changed their minds as it was one of the best SUVs around in terms of performance and handling. The Cayenne is a success for Porsche as it became one of their top-selling models. The Macan is set to emulate the success of the Cayenne by offering customers a car that is as good as the Cayenne but for those who do not want a car as big and as expensive as the Cayenne. Like the Cayenne, which is related to the Volkswagen Touareg and Audi Q7, the Macan itself is related to the Audi Q5. Exterior features of this Macan 2-liter turbo includes automatic auto-leveling by Xenon projector headlights with Porsche Dynamic Light System, automatic wipers, front and rear fog lights, front and rear parking sensors, LED daytime running lights, LED indicators for the front, sides and rear, LED rear lights, LED number plate lights, and twin rhombus-shaped exhaust pipes. The Macan does come standard with a dual-zone automatic climate control system. All of your controls are located on either sides of the gear lever. Obviously, the ones on the right are for your driver's side, and the ones on the left are for the passenger side. But for the driver, you do have your fan speed, temperature, your different modes, as well as your automatic um, mode. You do have the same set of controls for the passenger side. Right above, you do have your recirculation, sync, maximum air conditioning, air conditioning, as well as your front and rear defrost. Sync basically means if you have it activated, the driver's side will control all of the controllable um, settings. But if you turn it off, each side will have their own individual controls. Right above, you do have your hazard light switch as shown earlier. And right here, you do have your downhill assist button. You do have the Macan badging right beneath the gear lever. And down below that, you do have your electronic parking brake. It is currently engaged. To disengage it, put your foot on the brake and push it down. And to engage it, just simply pull it back up. To the right, you do have your off-road mode button as well as the button to activate or deactivate your auto start stop system. If activated, the engine will momentarily shut off when you arrive at a stop such as a traffic light or a traffic jam to save that extra bit of petrol or diesel depending on what the car is running on. On the left side, you do have your sport mode, sport plus, your adjustable dampers, your ride height control, as well as the button to turn off your traction control. And right down here, you do have a bit of storage with a cigarette lighter or power outlet depending on what you use it for.
This particular Macan is equipped with the Porsche Communication Management System that features a 7-inch touchscreen display, various media connectivity options, and navigation. The optional Bose sound system that is specified for this Macan comes with 14 speakers and 9 amplifier channels that produces 545 watts of power. I must say the Bose system that is specified with this Macan does sound quite good. We are currently in your main USB screen, you do have your song information to the left with your song um, artist, song title, duration, album and to the right you do have your list of um, USB options, you can find your music, um, text search, look at your playlists, bring up your track list. as well as your track order. The whole screen is actually controlled using your set of controls down here as well as a touch screen. To the far left, you do have your tuner button that allows you to cycle through between FM AM. Media allows you to cycle through between CD, auxiliary, USB, Bluetooth audio streaming, um, SD card input and all that. You also do have your on hook off hook buttons in the middle as well as your phone button. If you hit phone, you can um, access your Bluetooth telephone menu where you can pair a phone, delete a phone, look at your paired devices, look at your call list, phone book and all that. Navigation via the Navi button where you can enter an address, look at your previous destinations, look at your stored destinations, points of interest and all that. And if you hit map, obviously it brings you to your map. You can also use this knob to zoom in and out. And to the left, you do have your um, source button. This um, cycles through all of your available media options. Sound brings up your sound system settings with your bass, treble, balance and fader, your surround sound, your seat track buttons, your volume and power knob. And to the right, you do have your um, information button, your vehicle information button with your time, date, outside temperature, range, elapsed time, distance travel, average consumption, average speed, the same set of data but a different set of values depending on when you reset it. If you hit option, brings up your list of options with your park assist options, sport display, your car um, settings and that's about it Right underneath this um, cover, you do have your CD player, it is MP3 compatible, as well as your um, SIM card slot. Electronic central locking. And you do have power folding mirrors. On the steering wheel, this wheel on the left spoke adjusts your volume. You do have your on hook off buttons for the Bluetooth telephone system. And this wheel right here actually cycles through your different displays in the instrument cluster. Right now, you do have your um, display showing your oil temperature, 
engine temperature, voltometer and compass but you can also access your um, stopwatch, your all-wheel drive system, your tyre pressure monitoring system, your trip computer, navigation, map, your Bluetooth telephone menu, your audio menu and back to your vehicle information. Right above you do have your um, fuel gauge and range and down below your time and outside temperature. In the middle, below the ref counter, you do have your gear position, digital speedometer. And to the left, below your speedometer, you do have your trip computer and mileage. On the left stalk, you do have your indicator controls. And on the right stalk, your wiper controls. The steering wheel in this car is tilt and telescopic, it is also fully powered. There is a button right down here. Obviously, you um, use it to adjust the steering wheel. You also do have an analog um, stopwatch right above as part of the Sport Chrono package. Couple of cup holders, adjustable center armrest, with storage down below, a power outlet, as well as your auxiliary and USB ports. Auto dimming, rear view mirror, and right above you do have your controls for your LED reading lights in front, your interior lighting. They are also LED powered and right here you do have your sunroof controls. It is fully powered. You can also open it up as a vent. And use this button right here to close the shade. You also do have the button to turn off your parking sensors right here. As well as the button to activate your um, rear lighting. The sun visor for the driver's side does house a vanity mirror as well as LED lights. And you do have a grip handle right above. Right down here, you can find one of your Bose speakers, some storage, and right above, you do have your window control. There are sunshades for the rear windows as well. The rear seat backs do fold, just locate the levers on the sides of the headrests, pull it and flip the seat backs down. You can find the Porsche emblem embedded on the rear headrests as well.
I did set the driver's seat to a position that I would feel comfortable in. Um, I do get a bit of room to stretch out my legs underneath the driver's seat. I do have about this much leg room and about this much head room. I wouldn't say it is that roomy back here, but it is still um, comfortable enough for me. I'm about 5 foot 7, which is about 1.7 meters tall. There are storage pockets on the front seat backs, rear aircon vents with your um, temperature control. Down below, you do have a bit of storage with a cigarette lighter or power outlet, depending on what you use it for. And you do have a rear center armrest with cup holders. On the ceiling, for both sides, you do have grip handles, a hook, as well as your rear LED interior lights. There are three ways to operate the standard powered rear hatch on the Macan. There is the button inside the cabin, there is the button on the key fob, and there is also the button within the rear wiper housing. Once the rear hatch is opened, there is 500 litres of space with the rear seat backs in place and 1500 litres with the rear seat backs folded down. There are lights on both sides of the boot to help illuminate the area and to the left of the boot is a power outlet. To the right, there is a storage pocket and the buttons to help raise or lower the rear suspension to help loading and unloading items into the boot. Underneath the boot floor is the vehicle's spare tyre and jack as well as a subwoofer that is part of the Bose sound system. Obviously, there is a cargo cover to help keep items in the boot secure. You do get adjustable headrests front and rear. The driver and front passenger seat in this Macan gets the same full powered 14 way adjustments for the seats together with 2 person memory for both sides.
All of your seat controls are located down by the side, with your 2% memory controls located next to your interior door handle alongside your electronic central locking buttons. The Macan does come with a lockable glove box. The size of the glove box is actually a bit on the small side, however you can still store quite a number of items in there. You do get a grip handle for the front passenger side, as well as a sun visor with a vanity mirror and LED lights. Alright, so I guess that's it for the startup and full vehicle tour video of this 2014 Porsche Macan 2 liter turbo. Thanks for watching and goodbye.